Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Pastor Isaac Azakmugo, and uh, today um, we have a we have a Gen Z here, and uh, Gen Zs we want to applaud them because what is happening? They are having a burden for this country, and people should uh, not see them as enemies. People should see them as a vessels of God, and. Uh, what they are having is a passion for this country. And there's something that they are not understanding. That, uh, and they are not comprehending. And, and so today I want to engage with this young man. I want him to pour out his heart. He want to ask some questions. Um, and then I'm going to be able to answer him. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> my name is James Mulamba. Um, I heard this man of God speaking about how this government is God sent and how Ruto was chosen for us by God and that challenged me and I was not content with that and so I felt it prudent to do a session with him because I need to understand the perspective of a cleric and the perspective of the church and why they think that this president and this government is God chosen or why they think that um, the current president that we have is probably a gift from God because that does not augur well with me as a Gen Z and with pro probably so many other Kenyans out there who internalize and actually are skeptical about the church and about religion and so on. So we are going to have a discussion here. Um, we will try to keep it as objective and short as possible I hope this will um, impact someone at home and I hope this will open the eyes of Kenyans out there and we hope that we will have a good discussion going forward because it's about time we start um, holding everyone to account including the church because the church is, is and has been an advisor to governance and to authority and to government for a long time. Since the days of King Saul, th since the days of King David, the church through the prophets and the men of God have been giving wisdom and guidance to leaders all through time. So we cannot, uh, we cannot, we cannot push the church to the periphery. We understand that the church has a role to advise the government and has a role to give direction to the masses. And that is why I saw it important to have this discussion tonight. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, one of the things that I want to mention is that uh, there is something that is called the will of God. And uh, for me, a man, as a man of God, I believe in uh, a God who answers the prayers. When I look at uh, how this government came into being, for me, I don't, uh, without reason or doubt, I believe that uh, it was uh, God's will to have President William Ruto as our president. Nevertheless, I cannot agree with uh, some of the issues that the country is going through. And uh, I, ca I cannot support some of the things that, that uh, th this government have done. Nevertheless, having that uh, disagreement, God, I, can say that I can add to this that God works in a mysterious way. And God can use anybody for his own purposes. Yeah. And uh, his purposes are beyond our human knowledge. There is a word that Jesus said, that nobody can have something unless it is given from God. So, today I want to assure every Gen Z that we need to see President Ruto as the anointed one because he is still the father of this country. Whether he is good or bad, whether there are some issues we don't agree with him, he is still the father of this country. And nothing can change that. As long as he is our president and he is seated on, on that seat, he deserves our prayers, he deserves our, our support, 
And uh and my 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 prayer as a man of God is that God will turn his heart and he will have a wisdom of Solomon. Because Solomon was so fair. I want to ask uh, the president on behalf of Genesis. Mr. President, sir, you have a hard task. Because number one, you came with a hassle, a notion that I bought a map. And many people are so expectant. You really went and convinced everyone that you are the man who is going to bring change in this country. And we bought, about, we bought and, and we believed in you. Mr. President, it's not too late. The second question. Yes. Do you know, today I'm going to ask you tough questions because you are the church advocate. So today you are the church legal counsel. You are, you are sitting and standing in the position of the church. So all the hard questions that we've had and we are going to um, we are going to have in the future i am i will try as much as possible to summarize them and to ask you those questions yes. and please uh, try as much as possible to give to us uh, concise answers as remarkable and short as possible um the bible is against deceit and lies do you know President William Ruto is a deceitful and a liar, a deceitful person and a big liar? Uh, one of the things that I would want to say is that uh, I know there are some promises that were made during the campaign. And uh, those promises are not yet uh, manifested. And so, um, as I said earlier, I know there are some things, so many things that he have not done, that he, he uh, promised the Kenyans that he will do. And, but one thing I can say that uh, leadership is not easy. So um, I believe we can judge him before 2027. And that time we can, we can really say whether he was a liar or not. My second question. The current president has been mentioned in so many corruption scandals in this country. From the May scandal to the Jet scandal, um, I mean to the Chicken Gate scandal, I cannot exhaust all the scandals it been, he's been mentioned in. Now, as well, you say, Lisemalo Lipo. So, my question to you today is the church already knew William Ruto was corrupt. Why did they, they push him to us? Or was the church unaware that Ruto was mentioned in almost every other corruption scandal? Was the church aware? And why did the church push him to us? Despite all these glaring allegations, left, right and center. Uh, one of the things that I can say that uh, is not uh, that uh, I cannot deny there are some there has been scandals, and they are there. Some of them are still active, and uh, one of the things that I can say there is no government that have never had a scandal. That is number one. Number two, um, I have seen that uh, president is uh, trying to streamline things. And one of the things that the call that I can only make to him is that, Mr. President, you have said that after President, you are going to become an evangelist or a preacher. You have a very hard task to convince the Gen Cs that uh, you can preach to them. Because the Bible says, if you cannot treat that person well, how can you say you love God if you cannot treat the other person well? Kenyans are bitter people now. The Gen Cs are bitter. They are waiting for results, Mr. President. You have got, you have got to deliver to them and prove 
that what they are accusing that you are a liar, that you are scandalous, that you are not. And for me, I voted a president who can. Mr. President, you can do it. You can prove to them. You can prove to your critics that you can deliver this nation. So you are agreeing with me that the judge knew that Ruto was scandalous and corrupt, but they still pushed him to us. Well, I have another question. We had men of the clock. I cannot mention names, but Kenyans know them. Who frequented state house to pretend to pray for this government? I mean, at the time, it was the current residence because the then uh, deputy president is the president today. Did you happen to go to Karen? I, for me, I never went to Karen. So <laughs> let me um, one of uh, well, let me remove myself from that uh, th that, uh, that that number or that equation. And uh, one thing I can say that we live by hope. And sometimes you can make a decision with hope that that person is going to change. And uh, I can say that uh, Jesus stayed with Judas because he knew Judas one day will change. Let people not uh, blame the church. The church was doing what it thought it was it was light and uh, they say it is not over until it is over let us believe that that things are going to be better pastor judas did not change and the reason why jesus stayed with judas it was because he knew the plan the plan was for judas to betray jesus that jesus dies on the cross to liberate us all Je jesus was just following the plot and the plan that was god's plan um do you know that Men of clock, bishops, reverends, pastors who went to who went to Karen in between 2018 to 2022 were receiving brown envelopes. We have them in pictures. We have them in videos. For what? Our prayers something you can charge uh, you, you can charge anyone for? Are, are we supposed to pay uh, men of clock to pray for us? What is this obsession between men of clock and women of clock with money, with materialism, and with with, with, with things of this world. We know Jesus was not materialistic. We know the disciples were not materialistic. The example we have from Christ himself is religion is not supposed to be auctioned. It is not supposed to be sold. It is not a property for anyone to sell. In fact, I, I do not remember the exact verse, but Jesus says to the disciples, he cautions them against receiving money or anything material from those that they preach and pray for. He says, Mulipewa bure to any bure. He cautions them against selling the gospel and selling uh, the good the good things they get from God, from selling uh, uh, healing, from selling uh, miracles, and from selling any good deeds that they give through the Holy Spirit to the poor people. Why is it that there is an obsession in mostly in Africa to sell religion to to, to get brown envelopes, to get money from government and from corrupt officials to sanitize them. We know our MPs are corrupt, but they are on the front line of so many churches and they are praised every other church service because they give, uh, they give FT, FT amounts in tithes and in offerings. Why is the church so obsessed with materialism? And why were, were men of clock and women of clock so obsessed with receiving brown envelopes from the then deputy president? Well, one thing that I can say that uh, we are all a working progress. And the church is still learning some things, one, two, three. And uh, the only thing that I can say that uh, we need to be patient with each other because we are all a working progress. Even the church itself is a working progress. There are some mistakes that have been done in the past that we have realized, you know, this was a mistake. We gave uh, the politician altars, which was very long. For me, I don't believe in that. And, uh, yeah, and so one of, one of the things that I can say that uh, we are all a work in progress, and sometimes the mistakes that uh, even the church can do, the government, they become a learning zone. So what I would want to say is that uh, this is a learning zone for all of us. And uh, 
let us bear with us with each other people should uh, know that even the church there are some things that uh, that that we have happened in the altars that are ungodly and we, the church is analyzing and speaking against uh, all those things that you have mentioned some of these setting miracles and and setting things and now uh, even politicians misusing the altars so those are some of the things that i'm saying that uh, we are a growing nation and there are some things that even as church we are learning and we are changing and we are aligning ourselves with the word of god because we want the altars to be respected we want the altar not to be defiled and uh, and the church should learn the church should hear even what the gen z are saying because some of these fa some of these are facts they are reality and they are long. some of these are long and if we want to reach out to our the generation the gen z's we must be true we must be honest we must learn how to serve god in spirit and in truth um we deplatformed politicians from the pulpits of churches because we knew we know how corrupt they are we know how deceitful they are we know how evil they are but the church still gives them audience every other sunday because they give heftily wow utoa pesa mzuri for arambes for offerings for tithes the church is too materialistic and we are too open minded to condone that and we will continue deplatforming these politicians from the church platforms kila mahali because the church has lost it as you've said the church is guilty and it is now that the church is only realizing they they, they lost a moment to give to us and to give to kenyans a better leadership through its greediness the church was bought by the current president and by the current government so that gives me a very hard um, um, i mean gives me headaches it gives me a migraine to think that the church lost its course because god does not sleep he does not slumber the holy spirit does not sleep does not slumber so how is it possible that the church lost its course do we now conclude that the church is devoid of the holy spirit that the church no longer has uh, the holy spirit in it that the church is now being used as a conduit to siphon uh, public money that has been stolen from us that the church is a sanitizer that, that the church is a detergent to wash these dirty politicians that the church has lost the holy spirit can we now uh, can we now conclude that it is about time we lose faith in the church um i it is not time to lose faith in church and uh, as i said earlier we are a growing nation and also the church it is still growing if you look at the trade that is happening right now some politicians you know politicians no longer are being given access the way like before and uh and uh what i can say that uh even when a toddler is growing. Sometimes he falls down and he arises. The church is growing. And as, as we are growing, we are learning. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that I can approach the Genesis is that they have become staunch, they have become serious, they have, they have come out strongly. And, now, and there are some things that we need to look and uh, hear them as a church as well. We need to, re to streamline our altars. Uh, we need to bring wholeness in the church so that we may be able to be, we, we must separate ourselves even with the matters of political uh, and so that we can be able to reach out to the youth. So that, I, and I pray that uh, the church will learn so that they, they can allies to the occasion of being an authority in this nation. Do you know, um, in the past, men of God, staunch in their belief the likes of desmond tutu of south africa stood against and stood to be counted against repressive regimes do you know kenya's very own timothy Njoya, reverend the late i'm not sure if he's deceased now but timothy Njoya rose against and stood against he's still alive, he's still alive. sorry for that timothy Njoya went against the Moi government and he never went back he never missed his words he knew what what god teaches he knew what the bible teaches 
and he knew Moi was not that leader and he went against that leader as authoritative as Moi was as powerful as Moi was why is it that we cannot see the same with the current church in fact the church gives us bad leaders almost all the time they sanitize that bad MP they sanitize that bad governor they sanitize that bad senator they give to us uh, and push to us that bad president so that they can give to us stories and excuses in the end how why is the church so biased why is it so materialistic can we move past that can we get a better church i think uh, hey what i what I'm, I'm i'm saying and i'm repeating is that uh, mistakes are done and uh, and the church is learning and uh, changing some dynamics even in the altars and uh, I can attest that uh, things, where we, if we look at uh, many churches today, they are no longer excited to see politicians. And uh, the church is also coming out very strongly and condemning some of the things that are happening. And the church is speaking up. And uh, I thank God for what is happening. And uh, so it is the church is declaiming its position. And uh, so, as I said earlier, it is not over until God says it is over. And I believe this is the time for the church. And uh, one, of, one of the things that I can also add is that uh, some of these things that we are fighting, especially uh, corruption. Corruption is, uh, as it has been systematic. We are dealing with a system that has been there. And so uh, some of these things are spiritual foundations that we are fighting. And this is why many people don't understand that uh, we are fighting a system that has been there since independence. Corruption has been here. And this is what I want Gen Z's to understand, that some of these things, they are not physical. They are spiritual uh, are things that we are fighting in foundations. And foundations are fought in the spirit and they are brought down by the spirit. You know, uh, Ephesians six twelve says that uh, we do not war, uh, wage war against flesh and blood, but against a um, uh, uh, stronghold, against rulers of darkness in the heavenly places. And corruption is a foundation that they have eaten this country. And and the church knows and is speaking about it. And the church is speaking uh, and is reclaiming its authority. And I thank God for that. That uh, time has come that we must be able to speak where the government is uh, in error, we must stand up and speak. And, and I thank God that thing is happening. The other day we saw a citizen highlighting that uh, the men of God are speaking up. Uh, and so people should understand that the church is arising and the church is taking back its position. What I'm getting from you tonight is the fact that the church was asleep and it is as Gen Z's who walk the church from its lumber that the church has lo had lost its way and the church is only regaining its way after we, we came out openly and denounced the church. And if that had not happened, it is possible the church would still be in bed with the same politicians. That is what I'm getting here tonight. And as it is, so many young people in this country, as it is today, do not go to church. They already unsubscribed from religion and from church a long time because they saw the church as a depressive tool that is used to rule and govern the people. They saw the church as an avenue that the politicians use to control the masses. And these Gen Z's that you have are very liberal, very open-minded and very smart people. And they will question everything. They even question God. So they will question the church. That I will assure you. My final three questions as we, sum we summarize this. My first question will be, Jesse had so many sons, several, but God chose David among all those sons because in his wisdom and in his discernment, God saw David as the rightful king, the rightful heir, and he chose David over all the other sons of Jesse. In fact, when Samuel was anointing all the other sons, the oil did not pour out. It only poured out when he was anointing David. So God did not make a mistake. So why is it that the church is making a mistake? That is the first, the first question. The second question. Can God intentionally give Kenyans a bad president? Because you've already told us that Ruto is God chosen. Can God intentionally punish us with a bad president? My, my last question would be, 
the Bible tells us, well, among all his other evils, Ruto is a liar and a big one. Na ajaanza kukua muongo vila mekua president, even before when he was deputy president, and before that. The Bible tells us that those with a lying tongue belong to their father, the devil. Would I be right to say that President William Ruto's father is the devil? Well, 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 thank you so much for your questions. And uh, one of the things that I want to say that uh, um, now God does never make a mistake. The Bible says all things work together for good. And that is the word for Genesis. That uh, all the season that you are going through, um, God has a purpose. We are still praying. And I also want to go back to the issue of... Uh, uh, the church keeping quiet and uh, these battles, uh, as I said earlier, this battle is the battles of nations, of families, they are won in the knees. And our battle is spiritual. So the church has been doing what it ought to be, praying for this nation. And uh, there is no way I can, uh, I, I can crucify the church. The church has been praying. And uh, things are going to change and I know that uh, God is faithful. He has heard the cries of Kenyans and, uh, and I believe that as you are saying that uh, the president is, does not come from the devil. That one, that one is, is a no. Because it is God who puts people on the throne, not the devil. And, and so <laughs> I want everybody to understand they should not see it as a devil thing. But what they should know is that uh, what we live by is something that is called hope. Today, let us pray for the president. When your father is naked, when your father is in the air, what you do, you go on your knees, you pray for him. As I have just been saying, let us pray for the president that God will give him Solomonic wisdom. Let us God open his eyes that he may know that he has a contract with the Kenyans. Let, uh, let him go back to the knees. This government came out of prayers. Let President Ruto go back to prayers. Let us, President Ruto, go back to the word of God. Because when you look at Jesus, he spoke about love. Love your neighbor. And uh, also, Jesus portrayed a servanthood uh, attitude. He came to a point where even he uh, watched the feet of the disciples to show how lowly he became, a servant ruler. There is something you've said that has given me a final question, and I'm asking myself. You still insist that all presidents are God-chosen or all leaders are God-chosen. But then I ask myself, you are aware we had Idi Amin. You are aware we had Ad Adolf Hitler. You are aware today we have Ibrahim Traore who got power through a coup. Before him was Thomas Sankara in the, in, in the late, I think, 80s. We have Yoweri Museveni of Uganda who got into power through a coup. So are you telling us that even the evil presidents and those that also got power through overthrowing the current uh, the, the, their current president also got this power from God. I, I want to address that issue and to say that uh, the Bible says that uh, God's ways are not our ways. God works in very mysterious ways. And uh, the ways of God cannot be understood by human mind. And that is why the Bible says uh, that the kingdom of God it is not carnally understood but is spiritually designed. And so what I can tell you, the intelligent disease, is that uh, whatever happens on this earth, God has a purpose. And God can use anybody to fulfill his purpose, whether bad or good. Because if you look in the Bible, God lays somebody called ne ne uh, um, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar is the man who took the Israelites captive from Egypt, from Israel to, uh, to Babylon. And God was saying that I will use my servant Nebuchadnezzar. And so I want every Genesis to understand the ways of God 
are not the ways of man. So what would be your concluding remarks as I give mine? Uh, going forward, let us pray for the healing of this country. People are wounded. People are discouraged. People are confused. In midst of those confusion and his discouragement. Uh, number one, I want to say that God is still on the throne. And God loves this country. And the destiny of Kenya is so great. And uh, the destiny of Kenya shall not be aborted. People, let us not give up on God. We may give up on the government, but let us not give up on God. God is able to change even things that seem as if they cannot be changed. Because God does not slumber, nor sleep. And God is on our side. Let us focus on to him. And he will do things that are immeasurable according to his word. Thank you so much. Um, as James Mulamba, I think going forward, this would be my concluding remarks. Going forward, one, we should be very vigilant on who we take on as our next leader. Secondly, the church has lost it. Half the church is a puppet to the government. They are no longer a voice of reason. They are no longer, they are like the prophets of Baal who told the king what the king wanted to hear. They do not have a stand. They stand a lead ahead. And that is the stand we should have as Kenyans. They stand to question governance. They stand to question anyone who purports to be a leader and who wants to lead us. And I also think that we need to pray for this church because it has lost its way. One side of the church is good. The bigger side of the church is bad. It's a rotten apple that we can come to an agreement. Because God does not make a mistake. And if he doesn't, then that tells you that the current church we have does not have God in it. Because God who does not make a mistake would not exist within the same church that is making mistakes left, right, and center. The church has made a mistake in giving this guy as our president. This is not our exile moment You that you would say, God is punishing us like the way he punished the Israelites by taking them to exile for sinning against him. This is not our exile moment. This is a moment of the church losing its way because most of them are materialistic and they worship money and material things. We need to be vigilant. We need to stand our ground. And we as the people are still the church. The church is not a building. It is the people. We need to be vigilant in the church, vigilant outside the church, and we need to be the voice of reason going forward. And we need to ask for discernment and for the Holy Spirit going forward. And you should not listen to um, some of the pastors. Pastor here may be genuine and legit, but there are some pastors and reverends and bishops out there who are not as genuine as he is, who are not as authentic as he is, who are not legit. They are out to make money, they are out to enrich themselves, and they are out to please the government. Desist and run away from those churches run away from churches that have pastors and reverends and bishops who've lost you before who love money and who worship money because god is not materialistic be vigilant be alert going forward do not take everything the church says for what god says because most of these churches and some of these churches do not have god in them thank you <laughs>